We're before this award this evening, and I think you'll find the testimony interesting, uh, to make use of a site that presently contains the storage of trailers and containers, and uh, it is owned as normal as noted by Vessel. We were before the board, as you recall, not long ago, for some site improvements in connection with the ingress and egress, but this involves essentially the same also containers and storage, but uh, what's proposed here is to have the property now be leased by Vessel to a company, East Coast Warehouse and Distribution. They recently secured a contract with U.S. Customs, and what's proposed uh, in connection with this site is for scanning of uh, containers, and you see how the facility will be laid out, but essentially it will still be uh, when viewed uh, containers on the site. Uh, what's also part of this application is the structures that are there will be demolished. There's probably, I think, or maybe just one small building that's going to be demolished. And there is a uh, office trail that's proposed as part of this application. We have a detail to show you. In addition, we are doing site improvements, which include landscaping, doing site improvements, which include landscaping and decorative fencing and painting, which will greatly enhance the aesthetics and function of the site. So that's an overview of the application. It is in the uh, Kapkowski and Grove Redevelopment Plan, and there are no waivers or variances associated with that, this application. We've also received the departmental comments, all of which recommend this application, and our engine, we did have the benefit of, as, as always, our consultants review letters apply to us well in advance of the hearing to give our professionals an opportunity to respond to it. So, uh, if there were no further preliminary questions, or no preliminary questions, I would move to uh, call upon Dave Gibbons to testify on behalf of Vessel. GIBBOS 235 Birchwood Avenue, B I R C H W O O D in Cranford, 07016. Mr. Gibbons, could you please provide the board with your position with Best Local Government Cup? Uh, yes, my title is President. We are a family business. And a little bit of history of the vessel and its relationship with the city of Elizabeth. Sure, Vessel is part of the family business, maybe more commonly known as Elberon Development Co. Uh, Vessel's an affiliate of Elberon Development Co. Sorry. Back up. I'm going to tell them Elberon Development Co. It is an affiliate of, of Elberon. Uh, it has owned this property for, for over 40 years, um, just as it's owned other property. And if you get forward a little background of this of this property and what it's historically been used for. Sure. Uh, it is used presently for the storage of shipping containers. Uh, it has been used for that use for approximately 40 years. Um, currently the site is basically compacted millings, and on these millings, uh, shipping containers are stored. Um, the proposed use is Continued storage of shipping containers. However, after the construction of all the improvements we uh, laid out the scrap of the application. And I can see indicated in my opening statement you've now uh, entered into a lease agreement with a company called East Coast Warehouse. And we realize that one of their representatives is here to testify this evening. But if you could provide the board with an overview of what they plan to do on the site. Uh, sure. Um, East Coast Warehouse is a, a company, a business that's been in the city of Elizabeth in the area for a long time, and we always understood they had an outstanding reputation. Uh, we did enter into a lease with them. Uh, they had occupied property uh, literally adjacent to our site for approximately 20 years. Again, you will hear from a, a uh, from a CEO of East Coast Warehouse, um, but uh, they leased about a million square feet of building and property on Port Authority property adjacent to our site. Um, 
we entered into a lease with them uh, because they entered into a contract with U.S. Customs to service U.S. Customs on our site. Uh, so, so they're next door in the building, and I understand they use the building part of the services for U.S. Customs, and they will use the land on our site also as part of the services for U.S. Customs. Thank you. And as I indicated in my opening statement, and, and as indicated in the plan, so we're going to be site improvements made in conjunction with this application. There are going to be site improvements made in conjunction with this application, and I'm going to touch on uh, what's there now. Can you please indicate what, what's proposed by way of site improvements? Certainly. Uh, the site improvements include uh, pavement, a good long-term uh, paving specification, uh, significant stormwater management improvements, uh, a couple of detention basins, and new underground piping, uh, new exterior lighting, uh, new uh, decorative fencing around much of the site and, and other fencing uh, in other parts of the site. It's the same decorative fencing that we've done in other projects in the city. Uh, and uh, significant landscaping around the frontage of the site, both on North Avenue and on Ikea Drive. And I indicated also in my opening that uh, we were here at the end of last year and then ultimately at the beginning of this year in conjunction with the uh, other site, ingress and ingress. Can you comment on that? Uh, yes, yes. We, we were uh, before the board in, in January, first week of January of this year, uh, to seek approval for a proposed traffic light at the entrance to the property. Um, we put that traffic light on these plans as well for clarity and to perhaps orient to a site that they, they've seen in review recently. But the approval we see tonight is the other improvements besides that. Um, the light was approved at the January meeting subject to a condition which we're working on, and we now seek approval for the other improvements, excluding the traffic light. And have you had an opportunity to review the various departmental comments and the review letter from our consultants, subject to comments that should be made by your engineer? Have any problem complying with any terms and conditions? Uh, yes, we have reviewed uh, all of those reports, including uh, our other consultants letter, and I believe we comply. Uh, we can comply with all of the conditions that have except that uh, I think you will hear from our engineer as to one one proposed condition that has been worked out is, is something that's not applicable, but other than that, I, we can comply with it. Great. Thank you. I have no further questions of Mr. Gibbons at this time. Commissioner, any questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Two questions. In regard, excuse me, right in regards of your refuge collection, will you have a container on site, or, or will regional industry be collecting refuge? Uh, I think I'll let our engineer testify further to that, but I, I can comment on this, that the site will be occupied almost entirely by containers that are already loaded, and after they are, are scanned, they will leave the site. The, the only structure on site that will generate refuse is, is the proposed office trailer, uh, which is, I think, 24 by 56 feet. And again, I think I'd defer the rest of that response, uh, Commissioner, to our engineer. So you have a container site, I was saying? I'm not sure. I, I actually don't recall the plans do have a, a dedicated refuse container on site. I, I think it's going to make the case we don't need Referring to the engineer who will testify to that in later testimony. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, the other question is as you know, we here in the city uh, are deeply concerned about recycling. Uh, what are you proposing? How are you going to do your recycling in that area? Uh, in terms of refuse generated by the office trailer, I think we're, we're flexible to that. Uh, maybe we, we, could, we could discuss that. Yeah. Will, will that recycling be done by a regional because or is it regional industry or someone else outside of the source? I'm not. You mean, you mean recycling of, of refuse and garbage generated by the employees in the office trailer? Yes. I, I think they would certainly comply with whatever this, this board required or wrote out of the law. Okay. Since, since, I would think that since the trailer will be in Elizabeth, they will have to follow the rules and regulations as to who will pick it up. I guess that's something that's going to be... I should address that briefly. We 
just had meetings about this with other sites. Uh, okay. I, I'm getting bang from the can, Okay, I can address this very briefly. And uh, I've just finished meetings, not about this site in particular, but other sites in Elizabeth. And the way garbage pickup works with Elizabeth and recycling pickup is that the city will pick up from any facility, uh, but they limit the amount of cans and recycling they will pick up. The reason the larger retailers and the larger industrial areas that generate more waste don't use city pickup is because they generate more than the city picks up. I think the city limits to four cans per pickup. If this site generates less than four cans, it will be the trash will be picked up uh, by the city in the curbside on the Kia Drive or curbside a little bump out of North Avenue East. The city would also pick up their recycling. Judging by the number of employees, they state in their report that uh, seem to be on site. I, I see this facility not generating all that much uh, waste, and that would be most likely picked up by the city. Unless they opted for an outside carter, and if they opted for an outside carting industry, it would go with the contract with that outside carter and pick up somewhere on site. Uh, judging by, again, the, the amount of employees here, they could have city pick up, either on the Kia Drive or North Avenue East. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman, just a little clarity. Secretary Just a little clarity on the part. Uh, just going from Victor's uh, statements here. It says that the facility is being used to inspect shipping containers and scan. Can you just elaborate? Because you mentioned U.S. Customs. With that. Yeah, we, uh, we do have a representative of the East Coast here to testify as to the as to what that is about. Oh, yeah, okay. photographs to show you. Vice Chair Wilmer Wilson. Well, basically, I was asking questions about the scanning too. I see that you scan 85 to 93 a day. How long, approximately, does it take to scan one container? I, I will. I will definitely defer to the representative East Coast. That will be okay. Oh, I'm testimony coming. Seeing no other questions, that any of the commissioners have another witness to call, I assume? Yes, I'd like to refer to Ken. I'd like to call upon Jamie Overley. operations. 
We also utilize approximately 100 independent contractors uh, in our transportation segment of our business. Now, uh, with it's a separate company called Safeway Trucking, and then also we have another company called TJM Transportation. These are all sister companies. I was familiar with building this company called Romark. Romark Logistics was also part of that family, uh, owned by the Levinvitz family, who sold all these other subsidiaries with the exception of Romark. Levinvitz family is no longer involved with these. They own a small minority interest in the company. And now you could explain what's proposed for this site in particular. Yes, what's proposed for this site is uh, last year at the end of 2011, uh, the, there was an existing customs contract uh, that expired last year. They sent uh, the customs examination services out for bid. Uh, we bid on that contract and we were successful and received uh, an award of the, by U.S. Customs of a five-year contract. As part of that, uh, we were designated as a comprehensive container, container examination storage facility. Uh, and what that means is we provide uh, all the different types of examinations of inbound cargo into the port of Newark and New Jersey. Uh, it consists of uh, scanning of containers or the non-invasive scan of containers. It also involves the full inspection of cargo. Uh, the unloading of the cargo, we set it up in our warehouse. The customs agents uh, then examine the cargo. We then reload the cargo back into the container. We put it in a storage facility and ultimately distribute it to its final destination. Now on this property, it's going to be the scanning operation, is that correct? That's correct. It's, it, it's very simple. What, what will happen is the U.S. Customs will identify a container for examination, for scanning. And we will go to the port, we will pick up that container, we will drain that container back to our facility, this proposed facility. It will be stored, and then it, at night we will uh, stage all of the containers in the various slots as identified on uh, the schematic. The next day, the customs, uh, U.S. Customs, via a mobile scanner, uh, will scan all of these containers, take a picture, basically, just like they do at the airport with your luggage, and uh, based upon the results of those images, they will either identify uh, that cargo in that container for further full strip examination, which will be moved to our warehouse section, or they will release the container and we put it into the storage section uh, of our yard of the proposed facility, awaiting final distribution released by customs and ultimately will be delivered by either another trucker coming in to pick up that container and deliver it to its final destination or we in fact, as one of our services, can deliver it to its ultimate destination throughout the continent of the United States. And one of the questions, uh, and I know that the site engineer will address the, the site in more detail and the equipment, but if you could respond, I guess, first to uh, Mr. Irving's question with respect to how does this actually work, and then Vice Chair Ross's question on how long does it take. Sure. Uh, the, way, the way the actual scanning will work is uh, containers are on their chassis. They are lined up in rows, and these mobile uh, x-ray machines basically have, it has an arm, an arm like an L. It goes, the, the, the body of the truck moves alongside the container. This L-shaped uh, scanning device goes over the, the outside of the container um, and scans the unit. It goes in various rows, does one row, then makes a turn and comes back and does another row. 
It takes approximately six to seven minutes to scan per container, uh, each one of these containers. Uh, we're hoping that there's new equipment that's available that will reduce that time, but right now uh, it's taking six to seven bad minutes per container to scan. And what do you anticipate to be your hours of operation and number of employees at this site? Um, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. On this site, we have a store, uh, an administrative trailer. Um, we expect to have somewhere between five to seven personnel who will be responsible for uh, in, inbound processing of the containers, uh, some administrative function like invoicing to customers, uh, and then also the outbound processing of the containers from the yard as well. And you've had an opportunity to review the site plan and the parking space is allocated for this facility. Um, and I believe there's 20 spaces being provided. Do you feel from your experience that that would be more than sufficient for the operation? Yes. And what about buying uh, containers or vehicles or trucks coming and going from the site? Sure. Um, we expect uh, our, our history, we're, we're currently uh, conducting these, these examinations on four acres of our property uh, on our warehouse uh, facility now. And we have been averaging roughly uh, 70 to 80 containers per day. So the inbound activity would be roughly 70, 70 to 100 containers per day and a like amount of outbound containers per day. So in total volume per day, we're looking at somewhere between 150 and 200 containers per day. And one final week break, you indicated the number of employees that East Coast has. With this contract that you now have with Customs, and in addition to utilizing this site, do you anticipate hiring more employees? Uh, we, we have, and that's, uh, uh, last year at this time we had roughly uh, 25 employees dedicated to this operation. We are now at 70 employees. Thank you. I have no further questions, but I will note that our next witness will have a photograph showing the, the trucks that Mr. Overley was referring to. I'm going to ask you a question before I go to the commissioners. You said something about staging these things at night, and then you talked about the hours being daylight hours. These trucks, these containers are being brought onto the site, staged for the scanning at night, is what you're saying. Yeah, what I meant to say is within the yard at night. Mm -hmm. What will happen is the employees working there at night. Yes. Okay, and these trailers being brought to this site are all entering and exiting from the North Avenue site? They would, no. They would enter through the Polaris site. Yeah, that we're told yes. is coming. Right. That gate, but also keep in mind on our warehouse facility, the other portion of this that you can't see is we have two other entrances to our facility uh, that you could access through. We have an existing cut through on the, uh, the lot right now that the Port Authority has approved, where in the interim until that final approval is given on that, that gate, you could come in through the other two uh, entrances, come through the back of the building, and enter through there. So on the diagram that we're looking at up there, and I, I don't know what that, that's A2 I can read from here, that hasn't been introduced into evidence yet, but A2, the building to the right that we see a portion of, that's the end of East Coast Warehouse? It's, it's yeah, actually over there, yes. Uh, the other question I have is radiation. Right. There's, there's obviously um, safety standards that U.S. Customs, as part of this process, being part of, of um, you, it, being part of uh, uh, the requirements for this whole process. And let me just outline for you the, the, the way that our yard is laid out. It's, there are some specifics about uh, radiation safety standards by U.S. Customs as part of this application. First off, uh, 
there's a hundred uh, feet uh, scanning arm from the beam itself shooting in one direction. There needs to be a hundred feet uh, into a safe zone, which it won't be shooting out. None, none of this uh, scanning will occur shooting out ex uh, outside of the facilities. So 100 feet inward is within the parameters of the U.S. Customs. There's also uh, uh, 40 feet in the rear uh, safety behind uh, the, the truck as it moves through and 15 feet on both sides of the equipment. We're currently operating, this is just, uh, uh, we are currently operating this honor facility and keep in mind that this scanning uh, occurred previously on the terminals. So these standards have met, have, have been in place. The standards, the standards are controlled by some federal... Homeland Security. So, but I'm saying the radiation standards that probably help from human services or something. Exactly. And everybody's wearing radiation badge, part of transportation by attorneys and Homeland Security. But everyone wears a radiation badge so that they are tested once a month to make sure that they haven't received too much radiation. Do your employees wear radiation badges? Uh, no, they do not. They do not. That's not a requirement? Our, our employees are not allowed in the scanning facility. Once we're doing the scanning. Those are the U.S. customers. You notice that they're wearing radiation badges? They're, they're in the truck. I mean, it's a very secure area. Uh, no one's allowed in the area. They have uh, uh, guards at each end of the facility. Um, the guy, there are two uh, employees, U.S. Customs employees in the truck, and they have two vehicles uh, located at various uh, sites uh, in the yard to make sure that no personnel enter into this secure area while they're staying. In general, the entire site will be a highly secure site. Oh, at, at, it is absolutely required, as you might imagine. Uh, we don't know what's in these containers. They have been flagged for examination, and there's a heightened, heightened sense of, of awareness about these containers and, and the security as well. Commissioners, any questions? Yes, it, all of the containers that we examine come via ship. They come through Port Elizabeth, Port Newark. Any other questions, Commissioners? Chair, just one question. Just to follow up there, Morris, if a container is pinpointed to have okay. a if a container is pinpointed to have by U.S. Customs to have, say, hazardous materials in, in the container itself, what's the procedure? What happens? If it's only point in the hat, what I'm trying to say is that it has hazardous materials there. Where does it go from there? Well, there's then obviously it becomes the U.S. Customs. They have their procedures that they follow when they identify um, cargo that has you know, would would have those issues. Does it stay on site? Is it inspected on site on your facility? You know, uh, what I'm trying to say is that that, that container is pinpointed right there. It stays on site, and the U.S. Customs takes care of it. That's what they're there. I mean, yeah, I, I, you're talking, and I can't get the end of this question. Okay. Finish. Finish your question. Just to say, if something is pinpointed that hazardous materials on site, who takes care of it? U.S. Customs. Where does it go from there? Does it stay on your site? Is it inspected at your site? I, I it, it depends. It's possible. It depends on what's in the container. But that's a you know a, a home, homeland security issue. That you know all we do is stage the containers, assist the customs in laying out uh, the containers, and it's up to U.S. Customs to to actually do the inspections and to deal with whatever issues that they uh, they find. We're not privy to a lot of those details for national security reasons. So they would determine the fate of that trail? Yes, they would. 
And the kinds of things they're looking at are contraband, illegal drugs, uh, all the above, all the above, anything you can think of. We, the different types of examinations that, that, that we conduct, um, you know, for example, there's contraband uh, looking for narcotics. Uh, there's also, we, we perform agriculture examinations. For example, right now, there's a, in, uh, every load of rice uh, that comes in from India, we are inspected because of the capra beetle, which you may have read about. Capra beetle infestation. Um, we also do manifest examinations uh, where uh, the materials uh, that are in the container are compared to the bills of lading. Um, so it, it, it just depends upon uh, what's selected by customs and, and, and we're happy to provide that service. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Mr. Shelfers. Uh, to your knowledge, has such an incident occurred where there is a very hazardous, potentially dangerous material detected? In recent, you know, six months, a year, two years? Sammy, in order to exhibit E1, which is an eel putter, 
This shows the site as exists today with shipping containers stored on it. Uh, North Avenue to the south, Ikea Drive to the west, New England Motor Freight to the east, and the East Coast property to the north as described. Exhibit A2 to my right shows the proposal. The same 14.3 acre site will largely be paved. And the site is split into two in an east-west with an east-west divider. It will be split into two, divided into the eastern portion and the western portion. The eastern portion will be the storage of the trailers, which you can see are oriented up and down on the page. The northern portion is where the trailers or containers will be scanned, and they, these are oriented east-west on the page. I'm going to hand out um, some photographs which are marked as exhibits A3 and A4, and if you guys do mind sharing those, And it is a permitted use 
and the storage and scanning of shipping containers falling under uh, the permitted use of warehousing, seaport container servicing and storage. The site complies with all of the bulk requirements in this zone. There's one building proposed that is 854 square feet and it complies with all of the setback requirements. We have 20 proposed parking spaces which also complies with the redevelopment plan. Um, in terms of landscaping, we are proposing 22 deciduous trees and 10 evergreen trees. You can see these are located largely down at Kia Drive and North Avenue, with four trees located on the eastern boundary of the Newman Motor Freight. We're also adding 139 shrubs. Um, I know that Mr. Benegger's letter suggests that we add some more landscaping. We don't have a lot of space on the site to add more landscaping, but to the extent that we can, we will work that out with Mr. Venegra, where we can have approval this evening. In terms of site lighting, there are 13 new light poles proposed on the site. These light poles are 43 feet high, providing an even and safe distribution of light across the site. That really concludes my description of the proposal. And again, confirming you've had an opportunity to review the uh, letter from our consultants and just clarify that we got item one under grading, drainage, and utilities. Um, other than that, any issues complying with any of those terms and conditions? Good, that's good. Um, as I testified, um, although we are providing water quality, it is, um, the proposal as shown is in compliance with the city and state regulations and we intend to comply with the other comments in Mr. Benegger's letter. Thank you. I have no further questions at this time. Commissioners, Mr. Burrow's testimony, and you have any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just quickly, uh, I know they're going to have security guards now, correct? Right? They're stationed in location. Security? Sure, sorry, I, I perhaps didn't mention. There is a guardhouse located um, at the entrance driveway and gate, um, and there's sufficient storage both inbound and outbound outside the guardhouse. So, you, what are you talking about? One security or two? I mean, how many security guards? And judging by the size of the guardhouse, I would suspect it's one. Just one? Yes. Last question is it, do we have security cameras from on site? Is there a camera? No security cameras? Yes, I believe so. You believe so, or you, you're not sure? Don't, don't say if you. Excuse me? I, I said, don't say believe so. I want to know whether you have security cameras. No, I want to hear believe so. There are security cameras. You sure? Yes. But your first question, your first statement was, you believe so? I know so. There will be security cameras. We're getting a nod the operational. The operational person. If someone can ask that. Also, we'll concur with my statement that there is security cameras. Yes, there are security cameras. James Overly. Yes, there are security cameras. Uh, security is paramount to this operation. Uh, it's provided 24-7. We have the one guardhouse located there, and then we also have a proposed guardhouse uh, on the Polaris side as well. Uh, and it's number one with U.S. Customs, as you might imagine, uh, that we have security cameras and top of line equipment to make sure that this is a safe operation. You also had indicated in your testimony earlier that there were vehicles that were following the truck. The, 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 they escort, yes, they escort. The, and are there vehicles that will circulate at night as well? Uh, no, that, that's that's U.S. Customs. But I'm saying Customs to provide that? No, not at night. Not. Lighting on the property, so it's well lit at night. Yeah. It is. It is. Was Mr. 
the Burroughs answer. Mr. Hill, any other questions for Mr. Burroughs? Uh, I have one question. I'll call us uh, regarding the security considerations. Are the Elizabeth police involved in the, or are uh, prize of the operation familiar with it in case there is a need? Um, Go ahead and bring Mr. Burroughs back up. Uh, Mr. Overly, I'm sorry, Mr. Overly. We currently have the Port Authority police on the warehousing side, and we also have private, our own internal private security uh, that will be in the guard houses, and we have our own private security. But that's on the property that's on the port's property, your warehouse. And that will also be uh, provided on the proposed facility. Commissioner Chalfos' question, the way I understand it, is will the Elizabeth Police Department be in on what's going on on this property so they can provide backup? Well, they certainly can notify them and receive comments from hey, the police. Right. Yeah. But I'm saying, you know, we haven't provided, we haven't had a specific dialogue to that effect. But the Port Authority Police will be aware of this project, even though it's in, this property, even though it's a physical deal, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Hale, any other questions? Yes, I'd like to briefly call upon our traffic engineer, Mr. Carl Penke.
Can we take a five-minute break? We have 